Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema and Bio.com studio up here at TIFF, Robert Connolly, Ed Oxenvold. Um, Robert, this is the fourth time in the last six years or so that I've seen you up here at TIFF. First couple of times were pretty heavy fare. Balibo led to actual change. Um, and now we're back with kind of something a little bit friendlier. Um, is that you changing or just uh, your, your interest in different projects changing? Yeah, I guess for me, you know, I've got kids now, you know, 12 and 10 year old daughters, you know, I was kind of looking at them and, you know, they haven't been able to see any of my films before this. Um, and, you know, I thought I'd make a kid's film. It's been a fun adventure. You know, it's, it's interesting you should ask that because I don't think I could have made it if I didn't have kids. You know, I had to channel a little bit of, of what I've learned from them into making the film. What would you say has been the most important thing you've learned from them? They read the script, you know, Kitty, my eldest, read the script a few years ago and she said, look, it's good, Dad, you know, it's just not funny enough, you know, kids, they want comedy, you know, and I think I learned that from them, they, I got another writer on, Steve Warland, who writes comedy, and, and I realised that for kids, the way into drama and the bigger themes and issues that you want to deal with in cinema is by making them laugh, you know, they want to be entertained, so it was fantastic for me, it was new territory, you know, I haven't done comedy before. Ed, what was your first meeting like with Robert? Did you meet out somewhere or did you audition for him? Like we did, we met at the Tropicana Cafe in Sydney <laughs> over some penne pasta and it was it was great, we were straight into it, um, we just dove right into the story, um, it was great and immediately then I knew I wanted to do it. What do you look for? Like what do you, like when you're, like because you've done a bunch of TV in Australia, got now a Disney film under your belt and the, you know, so what starting to get like picky and kind of looking for certain things in particular? Not super picky, I mean I'm not, I don't think I'm at that level I can kind of choose, but um, definitely I'm not, I'm not definitely that guy that, oh something's coming through, I'll do that, it definitely has to be good script, good director, good, good everything, and this ticked all the boxes. And who gets to play your dad in this one? Sam Worthington. Better than your real dad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My real dad's He's dead. He's, He's dead. around. He's pretty good. Um, so, Sam Wellington, obviously, a bit of a reputation over the last yeah. 10 years. Um, what's it like, kind of, on a day to day? Kind of, like, what was that like? What was it? What was, did you meet him before you shot as well, or did you just kind of both turn up on set? And um, no, we, we, had, um, we had a little meeting at a cafe in Rockingham, which is where he grew up in more, Perth. More pasta? Um, no, it was milkshake, actually, this time. <laughs> Spicing it up a bit. Um, and yeah, and then we just pretty much got straight into it, and it was really great. It was really cool working with him. He taught me a lot about improvisation because he would, you know, improvise a bit. And when he, when he changed it, I had to react. So it taught me a lot about quick thinking and always being ready, not just saying the lines, be ready for anything, and still have it to do with the story and make it necessary. Yep. And what is what do you need from like a location, like shooting in the schools and and out in the outback and like all those kind of kind of bush areas. Is that common to you? Is that new to you? It's um, it's relatively new. I mean, I live not in the city, but in a suburb, in a suburban place. But we do have a holiday house uh, down the country, so I had been in that kind of bush region before. But um, it was great. It was so much fun filming in the outback. There was one day where it was just flies, heat. I had a cold. in In the heat, it was ridiculous. It was there were you know little things in my shoes, it was just oh, so hard. I had to ride a bike up a sandy dune, and then there was the bird. But then when you when you look back at it, it looks so great. And it's, it, yeah, like all of it in, in the country school and just riding the bike along the landscape looks so good. Yeah. Robert, that's all stuff you added in just to make daily life a little harder for your actors. That's sure right. He just wanted to punch <laughs> it. Okay. Um, for you working on like a f kind of family friendly film with a guy like Sam and um, like how real, like how do you find that balance between trying to keep it kind of real and having straight shooters and also amping up the playfulness and the comedy aspect of it? Yeah, it's a real challenge, you know, I knew that it had to have that environment on set. You know, my, my experience over the films I've done is that the way you make them kind of infuses the film with some magic. So if you're making a kid's film, there has to be a bit of play on set. You know, you have to have that environment where people can try things and do things differently. And it's hard, you know, you're under a tough schedule, you're trying to get through it as fast as you can. Yeah. But we assembled an amazing group. You know, we had Tristan Milani who, who shot it. He goes back to The Boys. He filmed The Boys for us in 97. You know, I've known him for so long. Also he was a very family-friendly film. Yeah, that's right. In the, in the lineage <laughs> of my family-friendly <laughs> films, sorry. But he... Um, 
but he created a great atmosphere on set, particularly with the young actors. Like he got to know them really well. The only thing to demystify the camera, so that the atmosphere was kind of playful. Um, yeah. Yeah, working with my friends, I think, in the crew helped. Wouldn't you say? Like, yeah. It, was kind of a, it, it just family. it felt yeah, it felt really comfortable, and everyone seemed to know each other. It was just it's amazing. And so when you filmed like the kind mm. of kind of more Hollywood Disney film. Yeah. It's called Alexander the Horrible, Terrible... Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. <laughs> um, so. What was that in terms of... The, uh, was that a completely different set experience than you've ever had? Yeah, because they were back to back. I did the Disney film first, then this, and it was just... I mean, it was great. It was great to be... Because I, I wanted to do different things, kind of just be versatile. Yeah. And um, so it was great from filming in L.A. to kind of, you know, in suburban to middle of nowhere but there's not a house to be seen for miles. Does it help being on set in a different place other than home to help you kind of just soak up every, like everything that's going on? Yeah I think it's interesting. Um, it's really cool being away from home. I mean not with family wise because I do miss them but it, it, it's very cool. It's a completely new experience. It's really great being in a different environment, learning the people. And Growing up traveling. in a family that is also creative yeah. Um, like Robert was telling us that your folks were in his short film 20 mm. years ago. Yeah. Um, did they expose you to a lot of kind of filmmakers and films early on? And if so, kind of what stuck for you? Yeah, it, it definitely was. Um, I'd go along to voiceovers with them and I was always, it was always kind of fascinating, but never really... I was very young at the time and I was never really interested, but then one time when I was probably... I was six. And they were doing, they were the voices for a live action TV show where everyone was in costumes and stuff. And we went to visit the set and it was just bizarre. I mean, I, I was always watching the TV thinking, oh, there's just a place there. But then I looked at the set, the bright, colorful pink set, and then the gray warehouse that just stretched on behind it. And then the boom mic and the camera and, and the people took off and there were humans. It was just kind of, what, wait? And um, that's what really stuck with me. And it was so interesting. What kind of movies are you into? Um, I love drama. I love I love movies that are hard to watch in the sense that you feel for the characters or com uh, or comedies. I love comedies and movies based on true stories like Captain Phillips and that, movies like that. I love watching. And you, Robert? I mean, we kind of ask him is that you don't you don't know what you're going to get. But for you, what do you still look for? What do you still consume content-wise? What do you still like? Increasingly, I'm looking for some experience in the cinema that that touches the heart. You know, I think there's such great television now, like epic, you know, cinematic TV. So you're watching your drama and your thrillers and your genre so much at home. So going to the cinema, you know, that collective experience in the dark. So you want something that kind of gets inside you. And that's what I'm trying to do with the films I make now, is trying to find some way to, to give the audience an experience they'd never have. Did you have... It's easy to ask kind of young actors and stuff who their mentors are kind of coming through the yeah. industry but for you did you have a mentor who kind of ushered you through and gave you those kind of tips and yeah. dance ideas? Yeah I guess you know the, the mentor early in my career was the Australian producer John Maynard he'd made this film The Navigator Vincent Ward's film and I'd seen that long before I met him I just thought it was incredible it was an ambition you know sci-fi drama I don't know what you call that film and it's really stayed with me. It'd be a good one to have a look at. I'll have to get you a copy. It's got a young kid in it as well. And, and you know, he digs through the earth and, you know, modern day and come up in, they come up from medieval time in mod modern New Zealand. And, yeah. um, you know, fascinating. But I, it showed me the power of cinema to transport you. But I'd have to say that it's the Australian film Storm Boy that I saw when I was little. It made me cry. It made me laugh. And I still think it's my favourite Australian film because it showed me that you can have this experience in the cinema that touches you. You know, the emotions you can feel in this dark room with a b bunch of people. Yeah. Kind of very unique. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, coming by and visiting us no again. No problem. Uh, always, Robert, always we'll see you, uh, <laughs> see you next year and probably see you in LA <laughs> sometime soon. Yeah. Love to get you out from Bondi. Get you to a real beach. <laughs> <laughs>